Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Stellaris Console Edition, the redo. Alrighty, when we left off, we had, well, we had just gotten a new civilization uncovered. Uh, it was purely by accident. Apparently, they had sent a science ship through here to explore a little bit, and uh, lo and behold, we discovered them, and they're actually a pretty good ally. Or at least a prospective ally, at least. And uh, while we're not going to be aggressive with them, I do kind of want to make sure I have decent supply uh, avenues, more or less, you know, claimed for us. So that is what we're going to try to do. Uh, our science ship here will explore up to here to eventually see if there's a way to speed up trying to keep some stuff for ourselves and if not i won't fuss too much about it anyway other than that uh we've just been exploring the galaxy so let's continue doing that i don't see why not construction complete all righty starbase is finished constructing all the stuff i asked of it good Good, 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 good. Couldn't really ask much more of that. Construction complete. And so is that starbase. Beautiful. Um, we want to join them after they're done with that. I notice we also have that to do. So once I finish with that, oh, they are done. How about that? Speak of the devil. We'll have them build both of those uh, mining stations and then head back off to Straya to relax a little bit. Oh, the map of the Stars Edict is over. No! I must continue it. For the good of the Empire Felony. Alright. And market. Might as well sell some minerals. Ooh, the Ute Asteroid Dwelling. This asteroid appears to have served as the home of a single Ute individual. Deep scans show a series of connected caves in the asteroid's interior that follow a pattern similar to the rooms seen in ancient Ute dwellings that have been discovered elsewhere. To learn more, we will have to dispatch an away team to investigate the cave system. New sit rep. Fair enough. And where was that? I think that was in the system. I think. Precursors. Come on. Yep, it was in the system, alright. Okay, so you finish that research station, or rather research project, and then do that. And then I'll have you look into whatever this is. Whatever it is. No idea what it is. Oh. Never mind. That's already been done by someone else. So, uh... In fact, I think it was being done by... This one. Yes, it is. So... Oops. Fuck it. I'm going to make you just research survey and then i guess go this way when it comes to research um yeah look there and then there and then there then by then the fleet will have dealt with this little problem here emphasis on little and then you can survey that yeah sounds good to me All right. Uh oh. Oh no. Inez Renard. You've done so much work for us. Well, let's at least check out the exile. 
Hmm. Exile isn't too bad. Already leveled up pretty far. Now we'll have them work on this. Yeah. Sounds good to me. But, uh, Ms. Renard. Um... Yeah, let's rename the Pathfinder. Okay, and... Okay. Good. Good and Special enough. project complete. Old gods, shrine to their percipient. Shrine to their percipient. Science officer Dean Glass has reported back with the ISS Velasco's findings at the percipient's shrine. They recognized early on that a text in some logographic script is inlaid in the walls, heavily distorted by the layers of translucent lacquer. Initial attempts at unscrambling the text, relying on the raw processing power of the ISS Velasco's computers to reconstruct the text from plain images, proved fruitless as it was simply too distorted to place in any known lingual family tree. Next, the ISS of the the crew of the ISS Velasco attempted bombarding the lacquer with light of varying wavelengths and, intens and intensity, but no beneficial reactions were observed. Dean Glass apparently considered physically separating the lacquer from the inlaid text, but realized that the strange glyphs would doubtlessly have been made misshapen to begin with, only to assume their proper shape when viewed correctly through the lens of the lacquer. Science officer Dean Glass was about to call the mission a failure when, looking up as they irritably paced along the edges of the circular space, they realized that discrete lines of cohesive text were momentarily forming before their eyes, melting away only to be replaced by new lines. Not long after they had the ceiling, walls, and floor imaged in a spiral pattern. Texts from other shrines should help us piece it all together. Hmm. So it had to be read in a spiral pattern to be able to actually read it. That is fascinating. Basically looking like a crazy person while you're circling around the room allows you to actually read the thing. Cool. That's definitely a way to keep people from figuring it out. At least figuring it out when you don't want them to. Alrighty. So far, so good. Construction complete. Next. And heading back. Good. Good, 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 good. Construction complete. System reconnaissance completed. Completed its construction. Queue. Special project complete. After investigating the Ute dwelling on asteroid 133D012, we have learned that it was the home of the famous philosopher hermit, Yaklir. I'm pronouncing that right, right? Yaklir? Yeah, Yaklir. She was evidently a figure of some renown in their culture. References to her have been found in several different Ute sources. Yaklir's remains were found by the dwelling's main airlock, where she perished waiting for a scheduled supply shuttle that never arrived. Interesting find. Unfortunate for her as well. Science ship reports enemy contact. Whoa, 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 what? Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that's not good. Once again, ending up way too close. 
Ooh, at least they were able to escape. Fuck. Well, so much for my idea. I need to get the fleet over here as well. <laughs> well, after they're done with uh, going to the pull core system. System reconnaissance completed. All right. Fleet action underway. Special project complete. After days of activities that can best be termed fiddling, Science Officer Dean Glass has reviewed the Doctrine of the Undaunted, a textile scroll coated with a sturdy plastic polymer. Fascinating. All right. Where is the last one of them, then? I have no idea. No. No. It would have to be one that I haven't recognized yet. Because there's no way to have. Oh, wait. Oh, I was holding on to that trigger accidentally. Oopsie doopsie. Um, it ended up being unmarked for some reason. That's stupid. Why did it do that? It might be on Rigor, actually. When I think about it. No. Okay, so it's not there. Uh. Oh. Was he here? No. Where the fuck was the other one? Where was the first likely? It was here? Move here and maybe it'll... Maybe it'll be correct? I don't know. Well, fleet combat stats it shows that it was a complete and utter slaughter the space amoebas. Alright. And total damage was 100% efficient. Huh. huh. Oh, this is our damage to them. Okay. It's 98% efficient. It's still pretty efficient. Uh, the UV lasers were extremely efficient. The coil guns and the flak battery, less so. But really, it was the coil gun that brought us down. Everything else was really good at doing what it was supposed to. Good, good to see and good to know. Wait a minute, there's a planet here that's habitable? And it's a Gaia world. It's small, but a Gaia world is very ideal. Alright, and in that case, since that is done, we'll have them survey that planet as well. Good. Good, 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 good. And off they go. There we go. Moving to the trap system to deal with them and hopefully open up that app. New sit rep. Okay, so it was in the Cresham system. Or the Cresham? Does SC usually do a shh noise? I forget. Fuck it. I don't care. Um, yeah, unlike the shrine. Okay, cool. The benefactress, huh? Alright, well. If you're here, might as well research it. Just, just that one. Okay, so there's that, and then okay, they started. So head Construction back after complete. that to repair the fleet, and then that's good. But but but, Polysimus Syndicate has closed borders to us. Why? 
The Polysimus Syndicate will no longer tolerate feline, feline intrusions into Pisilinian space. All feline vessels are expected to vacate Polysian... Polysimen. Okay. It's Polysimen. Okay. I was misreading that. That might be why they got pissed off at us. I have no idea why they actually are pissed off, though. That's not good. It's not good at all. Oh. Is it because our borders are brushing against each other? It might be. Yes, it is. Alright, um... Where's a, where's a way that we can fix this? What does our current trade deal with them looking like? I want to make sure before I make another one. Monthly minerals and monthly alloys. Oh, they're giving us alloys. Okay. What if we just give them some minerals for free? Will that change their tune? Because we do need to go over there to get some research stuff done. And I'd rather not go to war with them over it. Because that would be stupid. Um, offer a trade deal. Um, let's go with minerals. Just a paltry amount, really. Considering how much we're able to bring in. And do it over a course of 30 years. Eh? Yeah, make you like me? Yeah, will that be enough to keep the borders Music open for us? Oh. The birth of the galactic market. De facto galactic trade, unbound by the performance of international diplomacy, has existed since we first discovered that we are not alone in the universe. As new borders are discovered and old ones redrawn across the galaxy, galactic leaders agree that it is time to legitimize this commercial forum so that all may benefit. In the coming years, independent traders and government agencies will be looking to establish a quasi-centralized hub for galactic commerce. We would surely benefit were this hub to fall within Felinian space, so we can choose to promote one of our worlds for this purpose. Begins the event chain. Good. That helped us a lot. That helped us a hell of a lot. I don't want to offer a migration treaty. I don't want to offer a migration treaty. But it definitely should help the, us uh, get all that taken care of so then they'll open their borders to us again. Then I don't have to worry about not being able to do that. Anything for our most valued customers. Never forget who brings you the best deals, Phelans. The Polysima Syndicate. No, no. I know. I know. It'd be a great deal for you to open up your borders so I can get all that... Hey! They did. Beautiful. Special project complete. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Then after that, not gonna do any nice things like that again. <laughs> Deciphering the pictograms in the benefactress's shrine was a much smoother process than anticipated. All linguists involved described the language quickly connecting or clicking in their minds, despite its age and complexity. However, the writings are unlikely to make much sense until they are combined with the other writs associated with the rest of the quadrumvirate, quadrumvirate godhead. That is a hell of a word. Busting out the five dollar words out here, Jesus. Revelation. The complete doctrine of the gods, for that is what the recovered texts have to be regarded as, dwarfing the fairy tale scraps upon which the old felon religions were founded, is as shocking, shockingly revelatory, revelatory as it is revolutionary. With only a little bit of creative interpretation, it is clear that the people of Felendave were meant for great things, guided by the strong hand of a religious leader. Our path is one to godhood, but our past is littered with prophecies unfulfilled and sin born from ignorance. Redemption is ephemeral. 
we go to walk in the footsteps of the divine, our shift, our empire ethics would shift to spiritualist. Which I technically don't want to do. We could take that to learn in uh, society research. Regardless of the veracity or validity of the sacred texts, the fact remains that we share religious concepts with some older, unknown, spacefaring race. We could monetize the findings, which would bring us 1,500 credits, not insubstantial. Some of the wealthier faith corporations have caught wind of the affair and are very interested. Faith corporations, huh? Kind of likes how some people run their fucking churches right now. Hmm? Uh. <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. Uh. That is pretty substantial. That is pretty substantial at this point. That would be a lot of money. Or I could suppress the findings for influence. Knowledge is power. Secret knowledge is secret power. Hmm. I usually go with suppress the findings. Because influence in this early on in the game is very useful and very hard to come by. So. Generally, I think it's usually a good idea to just suppress it. Just suppress it for now. And just keep that in the back of your minds that. You were probably meant to run this galaxy. Just, you know, if you follow the rules. Alright. And the Brinkman will return in about seven months. Okay. Fair enough. And they will be heading over... Damn, that's going to be a long fucking time. That is a long ass trip. One... 1,960 days. Holy fuck. Alright, I feel bad for that. That's a long ass fucking haul for a tour. But eh. It is what it is. Alrighty. And they are very happy with us right now. Due to that trade deal. And here's hoping they stay that way for the foreseeable future. Because I do not want to let go of that. Especially while I still need to have some of that other stuff taken care of. What? I need you to research that. What are you doing? Crazy? What the what? What? They're declaring us a rival? Why? Let us end the charade. What? Why? Why? I have trades going with you. I was being nice to you. We're equivalent on all fronts. But I was being nice. What are you doing? Okay. All right. Fine, I guess. Our pioneers have made planet fall. Brave new world. Colonize a planet. Our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta on one of the several continents that can be found on Dawnlight. This temperate, forested region will serve as an ideal first landing site. 
The ship has been permanently converted into an administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers, the first felon city on an alien world. A great day for the Empire of Felony. What in the fuck are they doing? I'm sorry, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that they're deciding... Wow, okay. It is time we did the galaxy a service and rid the market of your cheap knock-off-brand knockoffs. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck, man? I've done nothing to you. I have been nice to you. What in the hell? What in... What? What? I've done nothing. I have done nothing. Wow. Fucking wow. Fuck, man. Okay. Um, since I can't really do anything until the fleet gets over there, I'm just going to have them explore whoops, these systems for the time being. Uh, I can't wrap my head around it. Why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, why not? Let's reinforce the fleet a little further. I don't get it. I don't get why would you why would you do that when I have given you so much? I've given you like an unending fucking Special supply of, of minerals and materials. Ah, wow. The Adlorans secured. Okay. The crew of the ISS Velasco has managed to collect a small group of Adlorans from the icy surface of Cresham 3. These white furry omnivores wrap themselves into tight balls. Unfortunate phrase. And roll across the planet's snow fields at astonishing speeds. One animal was clocked at over 80 kilometers per hour. Damn. This aided in their detection since the passage of their rolling forms kicks up huge plumes of swirling snow. Cool. And the vile Orunthi. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And then this one was... Was what? I'm trying to figure out what the fucking... Uh, oh, that's what it is. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. And then here, I guess. Then... System reconnaissance Ooh. completed. A wavering signal haunts Antak Ram 2, though it does not seem to originate from the planet's surface. Okay. And we have completed the colonial centralization 
Research, good. Good, 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 good. Um, cloning, that'd be nice. As would uh, Stellar Expansion, that would be very nice. Though having the Space Combat Doctrine would also be very nice. I'm going to go with that. Because it's also the cheapest in regards to everything here. Well, almost cheapest. Frequency tuning is cheap, but it's also not a technology I need. So, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I'm also going to sell a thousand there. There we go. Build up our stores of energy credits a little bit. Hmm. This was over here. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. You know what? For a little while, I'm going to have this ship survey the systems that are close by that I haven't even touched yet. Simply because I want to know what's going on on those. The Ransom Mirrors. An emergency transmission buoy floats in gentle orbit around Antak Ram 2. Its outer casing is heavily damaged, seemingly by glancing fire, weapons fire, or a powerful explosion. It might be a Felinian model for civilian ships designed to be ejected as an emergency measure should the comms system fail, but the extent of the damage makes it impossible to know for certain. It is repeating a weak, distorted signal. Clean it New up. Sit rep. Clean it up. We'll see what's up. I keep forgetting that our planet's actually orbiting a gas giant. I keep forgetting that. And then we'll have them come back to construction research, complete. Uh, researching assisting research on the planet, I should say. Okay. Okay. That's a name. Rint Beacon. It's a hell of a name for a star. Rint Beacon. All right. Fair enough. Hmm. Still can't believe they anomaly ooh, found opted to declare us rivals, then taking the good thing I was giving them. Don't get it. There is significant amount of debris in orbit around this gas giant. Most of it appears to come from long-lost starships of various configurations. Fair enough. Now I think about it. Let's look at the average age of our scientists. A couple of them are uh, pretty old. Arnav Kuti, Lee Howard, and Gaston Pelissier are pushing... 80 plus for at least Arnav and Lee and are uh, currently nearing 80 for Gaston. Let's start looking into new leaders. Themba is actually pretty old. And Shin Shivangi Sondharam. Eh, why not? Another meticulous by Javier Solano. Fair enough. We'll call that good for now. Lawrence is also pushing 80, so let's bring in another another one. A fleet logistician. Lowers the upkeep of ships. That would be pretty nice. But Giovanna Moretti is also resilient and only just three years older. Okay. We'll go with Giovanna. They'll definitely go through enough combat that they'll pick up additional perks along the way. Probably. If this fucking 
rivalry with Polysimus keeps going any further. Again, I don't know why. I don't know why you... I have given you so much. You are pacifists. What is wrong with you? I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm being so nice to them, and they decide to just flip me the bird. Well, fuck you two. Fuck you two. Hmm. Well, the fleet's heading down there faster than I expected. Among the husks of the derelict starships orbiting Rasnum 1, we have discovered an almost intact alien research vessel. This ship's logs reveal that it suffered a critical hardware, mal hardware malfunction and was stuck in limbo for 142 days before the crew perished from malnutrition. The body of the captain was found on his cot, clutching a small metal cube, each side a different color and split into nine equal rotatable squares. Science officer Pranav Kuti is convinced that when rotated in the correct pattern, the cube will open to reveal a hidden treasure. Pranav, I know you're old. I know you're old, so some thoughts in your head will sometimes come up and be like, oh, well, we might as well investigate this thing. This thing, this thing seems important in some way, shape, or form, and it must have been hidden treasure in there. Some of those thoughts need to be, need to be tempered a little bit. Just a little bit. Because you're looking at a fucking Rubik's Cube. But, okay. Could do that, or we could just have him leave it be. Yeah, there's benefits to doing it. New Rotate sit those squares, officer. Um, the cube. Um... Where was he again? There we go. He's over here. Research the project, then survey the system, and survey this system, and then survey this system. Okay. Good. And then, wait, what? System reconnaissance completed. I guess also research that, which I didn't do. I didn't even know I didn't do that. Okay. Oh, that, that was the emergency buoy. That's right. I remember that. All right. Rent Beacon has been fully surveyed. Oh, Special project on. complete. Slice and dice. The crew on the From Beyond has subjected the metal cube to every code-breaking algorithm known to us, and it has responded with nothing but silence. Is it a cipher? A container for valuable items? If there is no meaning behind this cube, what then is the meaning of anything? For some of the thoughts that scurried through the overworked mind of science officer Pranav Kuti, when he finally brought out the laser and sliced first the cube, then his right paw in half, the cube was empty. Oh dear. Pranav Kuti will never be the same again. He now has the maniacal trait. <sighs> I mainly did that to show you what happens, but, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. Okay. Is there a way to get you guys liking us to the point I can make some trade deals or whatnot with you. I don't want to do that many. No. But 11, I can do that. There we go. Conf 
confirm. The United Nations of Earth graciously accepts this gift, okay? Is there more stuff we can do now? Do you like us? No. a lot of stuff I can do. Uh, they have a neutral attitude towards us. And... Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Just not enough to overdo their base opinion. Hmm. Commercial Pact is really the closest we're at. Other research agreements. Oh, they have other research agreements with uh, Polysimus, and that means they don't like us currently enough for that. And they would not get much of a technological benefit from us. Hmm. The distance doesn't help either. Okay, all right. It's commercial pact that would be the most likely to work, and even that isn't good enough. But I can get one with the Yeon Alliance. That would be nice. Form a commercial pact with this empire. It cost us a little bit of influence. But we would get a decent amount of credits, and they will get a decent amount back. Why not? And then form a research agreement as well. It'd get us in good with them, so why not? Nice! Nice! They agreed. Beautiful. System reconnaissance completed. Free trade between our worlds? Yes, it, it's quite a vision. We agree to your terms, Valens. Beautiful. Very well. We will share our knowledge with the Empire of Felinae in exchange for your own. Good. Good, 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 good. Good shit. Special right. project complete. Tassar Gold. Tassargoid is an extremely lethal predator that stalks the dense jungles of Asland 3A at night, paralyzing its prey with electric shocks before sucking their brains out with its tube-like mouth. Jesus. Unfortunately, three of our crew members from the ISS Arbiter were lost to these creatures before a specimen could be secured. The Museum of Exobiology on Felon Day will rename one of its wings after these brave officers in, to honor their sacrifice. I wouldn't say excellent, but, you know, at least we did it. And at least they're getting honored for their sacrifice. Okay. I am now leveled up. Nice. How old am I, anyway? 84. I am pushing... I am pushing my luck. <laughs> Tell you what. Pushing my luck. Alright. My fleet is nearing... It's nearing the target. We have claimed a new world. The colony of Dawnlight is officially established. Beautiful. And the weather control systems is now implemented beautiful just in time too Ooh. rare crystal mining which would be nice or star hold or auto cannons living metal is a little outside of our reach right now but it could go with geothermal fracking that would be nice especially since i'm giving so many of my minerals away right now sure yeah let's do it 
the colony of Dawnlight is now officially established. Oh, I haven't implemented a leader yet. Let's do that. Let's bring in... All of them are environmental engineers. I do not need an environmental engineer. <laughs> I don't even need to terraform the planet much more than I already have. So, Ren, Ren Yamazaki, you are eager and you are ready to serve. And your upkeep would be significantly lower than the rest of these guys. So, you're up, bye. Let's go. Alright. Let's go. Uh... Oh, he, he eliminates a little bit of crime as well. Cool. Nice. All right, and let's get some things built up. Huh? Two. And. Maybe three? Yeah, we'll call that good. That should be enough, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that should be enough. It should be plenty population will be rising to meet the demand of jobs soon enough although now anomaly I'm found okay there are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock cool let's do it sayama one where's that okay so over there good um now that i think about it ooh. Nice, I can upgrade this. Cool. I'll do that. Absolutely, I'll do that. Now I think about it. Some of that might be too... Oopsie. Just, just eliminate the whole thing. Fuck it. Um, some of that might be too excessive. So we'll just go with one for now. That way I'm not overdoing it when it comes to uh, power demands. Because a lot of that will be a pain in my ass if I do not temper it with some uh, caution. Hmm. All right. And where are they at? They're over here. Okay. They're on their way then. They're almost there. Then we'll get to take care of that. And it'll be good. Yeah. Taking evasive action. Uh oh. That ain't good. The small rodent like creatures known as Orinthi are native to Mar Adeta 3, where their habitat extends across most of the planet's diverse climactic regions. They breed at an extremely rapid rate and seem to have a particular fondness for chewing on electric cables. Procuring specimens was not a problem. In fact, after the initial creatures were collected, more of them made their way onto the ISS Velasco by hitching rides on the science ship's orbital shuttles. Exactly why the Museum of Exobiology requested an Orinthi specimens remains a mystery. But hey. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. At least it's money for us. And another bunch of space amoebas. Well, our fleet's going to have a field day. Work on them and then go over there. And please tell me they'll be able to evade fast enough. Please tell me they'll be able to evade fast enough. Where are they at currently? Okay, maybe they'll be able to get out. Oh, thank God. Okay, I did not want to have to deal with another one. Okay, moat stabilization. Good, that's taken care of. Uh, um, no point doing any of those. At least not yet. Not while I have basic ships. Cold fusion power would be useful. The ability to sustain a fusion reaction at relatively low temperatures will result in a new generation of fusion reactors for our ships. 
good enough for me. Let's do it. Ooh, I'm getting help from the Yuan Research Agreement already when it comes to these. Cool. Maradetta. There we go. That's already being taken care of. What do I do with you, then? Project has already been researched. What do you mean it's already been researched? Bullshit, it's already been researched. What do you mean it's already been researched? Clearly it hasn't. Or, it's being marked for reasons it shouldn't be. Could be. Ravenous Zulkor. Oh, that's already being researched. Okay, cool. So, we'll eliminate these that I don't need to research right now. Ah. There you go. That was why. Okay. Well, let's end this episode here for right now, and in the meantime, we'll move the Velasco and Dean Glass to Estinda to assist research on Dawnlight. But for now, it's time to end this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments if we bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together and I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and only Stray Cat playing games and just trying to get things completed. I realize now that I had already finished the stuff here, so I don't need to worry about the research stuff there. But uh, they have now declared us a rival, and that's not good. Especially since it's between us and Earth. And uh, Earth is kind of already on their side, so here's hoping if I do anything to rectify this rivalry that they seem to want to do with us, that it doesn't piss off Earth in the process. Because I kind of want to have earth on our side just if nothing then just simple sentimentality but uh we already have the yeon on our side and that's pretty fucking cool for you